I'm supposed to give it a pause, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You are live with Get Connected. Mike Agarbo here with John Beeler today. We've got an interesting program uh, in a little bit here. We're going to be talking about all the new Amazon releases. So you know, many of them. <laughs> it's really weird. Uh, with Apple or, you know, Samsung or the other big tech uh, giants, when they do an announcement, it's typically around a specific product or a few products. When Amazon does it, increasingly so now, it's like it just rains products. It's like a dump truck. Delivery truck. A delivery truck. An Amazon delivery <laughs> truck. Literally dozens uh, of uh, new devices. So uh, new Echo speakers, but also weird stuff like an Amazon Ring and glasses. And glasses and a dog tag. And a smart oven. And a smart oven. Well, we'll be talking about all of that with Brian Jackson from Infotech. Uh, right now, let's talk about some of the uh, tech news. Uh, this is something we'll be covering tomorrow on the App Show. McDonald's is uh, using Alexa and Google Assistant to let you apply for a job. Yeah, it's interesting how they're using different mechanisms to attract a new audience for those applications. Yeah. It, I mean, obviously, the target audience, uh, I think, would be younger. So they're trying to reach the kids, so to speak. Uh, where, where the kids are. Yeah. But do you think a lot of them use Alexa? Is that more the parents getting these things? I don't know. I, I could see the kids using them in the house just as much as the parents. Yeah. Kids are lazy. I'm lazy. I'm lazy. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I'm teaching my kids. <laughs> Well, uh, if you want to hear more about that, we've uh, got uh, one of the uh, the McDonald's folks uh, on the line tomorrow for the app show uh, telling us why they went uh, down this road and how it all works. Uh, Match.com uh, connected daters to fake accounts to boost subscriptions, U.S. regulators say. Wow. Surprising. Shocking. Yes. Let's pad the subscription base with fake accounts to make it look better than it actually is. So what, what happened here, John? So what happened was if you... Uh, our match.com user, you, you, you can use it for free, but you kind of have a limited sort of view of the world, so to speak, uh, as far as uh, your options, uh, the way you can communicate with other potential matches. And they're always trying to get you to subscribe, which gives you, unlocks the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. Um, so the, what happened here, at least what the uh, Federal Trade Commission is accusing match.com of doing is that they would match these unsubscribed users to fake accounts to encourage them to subscribe so they can have a chat with a fake account and proceed down that matchmaking process. But how does a large company do that crap? Like, don't, don't you think someone along the way is going to say something? You would think so. And you would also figure out, well, what happens? Is that particular user going to just have a really bad experience with that fake account that's not going to get back to them? And they're going to feel like they got ripped off. Uh, the other thing that the FTC is uh, um, accusing Match for doing is making it really difficult to unsubscribe after you've done it. They've they've got all kinds of little hooks and legalese and things like that that make it really difficult for you to actually cancel or, or back out of your subscription. Do you think, obviously Match.com, they've... Uh responded to this saying that it's all f false. Right. And they, they, they didn't immediately respond, but they eventually did directly to the FTC. And they said, you know, we do all kinds of things to prevent fraudulent accounts from being activated, uh, shutting them down within hours, if not the first day, about 95% of them. Um, so I think they're on the offense right now or on the defense, I should say. And they're just trying to basically do some damage control. But, um, some people really like Match, though. So, well, they own a lot of dating sites out there. They bought the plenty of fish. Yeah. dot com here, uh, a local Vancouver dating yeah. site, and yeah, I'm I'm interested to see how that all kind of shakes out. Uh, well, it, there's probably a bit of truth on both sides, right? Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing is, you just never know who's on the other side of those those accounts. If it's well, a person, remember, remember Ashley Madison, right? Yeah, the cheating website. <laughs> yes. It was found that most of the accounts were bogus. Right. Yeah. Just to get a handful of suckers to subscribe. <laughs> There's one born every minute. Pretty much. Okay, uh, another interesting story. Tesla begins monitoring data usage. So if you have a Tesla, you actually get uh, 
and always on cellular data connection. So that's for important security updates. And depending which Tesla and which package of Tesla you bought, uh, you also get uh, real-time navigation information, GPS information. Uh, some cars uh, can also stream music. Uh, through a music subscription, and some even have an internet browser on them. Uh, so some Tesla owners now, after the last update, are, are seeing that there's a, uh, a little data monitoring uh, icon with 50 gig gigabit gigabytes. Sorry, they don't reference what that means, but I'm just wondering if they're going to start charging for. Do you have any sense of how big some of those software updates are? A gig. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it, uh, again, 50 gigs. Is that a month? Is that a year? No one knows. Yeah. I mean, I think it just might be some uh, diagnostic mode that got checked on by accident or something like that. Yeah. Because um, presumably they're going to have to have a pretty good long lead up to say, hey, we're going to start charging you soon for this. You've been following Trump? <laughs> it's, How can you not? It's, it's hard not to. Uh, the whole impeachment thing right now apparently uh, could derail his administration's maneuver in maneuvers in tech what's the lowdown there well yeah i mean i one of the challenges that that the government has in the u.s is that any time that there's an impeachment thing happening they have to put all their resources into dealing with that yeah and trump himself has said you know a lot of things are going to suffer because we're spending all of our time on this impeachment process so um it's really unfortunate but uh honestly i mean i I'm not quite sure what that means at the end of the day, because also things like, you know, we've talked extensively about like Huawei's trouble with, with Trump and the U S yeah. Is, are those lawsuits going to be, you know, impacted by this at all? Um, those types of things. It's just, there's so much to unpack with this particular development and whether or not, like, I have no idea how long this process is going to take. You know, it's just sad because it's such a waste of time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even know where to begin with that. The whole China trade war thing is definitely impacting technology and technology companies, uh, putting a lot of uncertainty there. A lot, yeah. You know what I mean? Because most of our tech is made in China. So if you're a tech company developing uh, technologies or products here in Canada or the US, uh, you're going to be uh, a little cautious about having your stuff manufactured over in China. And if you don't get it manufactured there, it's probably going to be more expensive to get it done somewhere else. Does that make you uncompetitive? And then you have to think about how you're going to sell it to one of the biggest markets in the U S as well. Yeah. It's, it's just so complex. And these are the kinds of things that Trump complained about Obama not having time to do because he was busy doing other things. Trump, Trump, Trump. Uh, we have an interesting show. We're going to be talking a lot about Amazon on today's program uh, coming up after the break. And it's important that we talk through all these new announcements uh, that uh, they have. You know, a lot of people know Amazon from Amazon.ca where they get all their stuff. They order it. comes within a day. It's like magic. Uh, but they are making so many different tech products. They're into so many different verticals now. I mean, they've got Amazon Prime Video. They're like Netflix. They've got all the smart speakers. And they're wanting to put their... Alexa voice assistant into anything they possibly can. And that's kind of the big war right now with voice assistants. It's uh, Alexa, there's Google, uh, and also Siri. So it's it's kind of an important story. When we come back from the break, we'll talk about the dozens of new products that they have announced this past week, and including crazy things like Alexa dog tags. There must be just a big dartboard. Uh, yeah, the engineers are, uh, dog tags? Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're listening to Get Connected here on the Chorus Radio Network. Back after this. You are back with Get Connected. Mike Agarbo here with uh, John Beeler. We've uh, got one of our good friends, Brian Jackson from Infotech Research Group out of Toronto. They're one of the leading technology analyst firms uh, here in uh, North America. Uh, I want to talk about Amazon now. This week, they had an announcement. And I always laugh at their announcements because... They just, it's like a dump truck full of stuff. <laughs> they just come into this auditorium and, and just dump like dozens of different uh, items. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree with that, uh, that Brian. 
Yeah, it's hard to keep up with everything that Amazon launches. It's a huge company, and when they want to push uh, something new and try something different, they just launch hardware into the market and see how it does. Well, this uh, all seemed to be uh, mostly around Alexa and uh, everything from their, I guess, their Echo speaker, speaker line. They've done some refreshes and added some new product, uh, and they also have some what John and I call crazy stuff. Uh, and we'll talk about that in the next segment. Things like uh, Alexa dog tags and a smart oven and smart glasses. But let's start with the stuff that most people will probably uh, be interested in and probably purchase. And that would be the Echo speaker line. So what were some of the highlights there for you, Brian? Yeah, so first of all, there's the core Echo device is getting an upgrade. So uh, most people are familiar with by now that cylinder that sits in the home and it's the main way that people talk to Alexa. It costs about $100. This new version is covered in felt. It ha It's improved the speaker technology a little bit, so it sounds better. Uh, it seems like it'll be priced at about $103 US, I think $160 Canadian. But that's all you need to know about that. If you're familiar with the basic Amazon Echo smart speaker, it's an upgrade. They also uh, introduced a, uh, I guess, a more premium version, uh, in my mind, to compete against like the Google Max, for example, called the Echo Studio. What are the details on that one? Yeah, I agree entirely. This is one piece of the Amazon Echo portfolio that's been missing. They haven't been able to compete with the Google Max speaker and some of the higher end Sonos speakers on the market. Or, uh, for example, Apple has the HomePod. So this is the Echo Studio. And uh, what's interesting to note about this is that it's really undercutting the other high-end speakers on a price point. I think it's going to cost about $260 Canadian? U.S., I believe. So, no, that's Canadian. US? Oh, that's okay. Canadian. Somewhere yeah. around there. Oh, they are undercutting uh, everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that, that could be interesting for consumers that have been waiting for uh, a chance to purchase like a higher end smart speaker, but haven't pulled the trigger yet because a $500 price point seems like a little bit too much to bite off. And the other thing to note here is the partnership with Dolby. So they're pushing this new idea that you have 3D sound and you're going to uh, experience audio in some new way that you haven't experienced before because they've designed uh, this speaker to deliver audio uh, in a way that sounds like it's coming from behind you at different points in your room. And uh, they had this demo video where it was amazing uh, people that were wearing a blindfold and listening to one speaker that they thought was many speakers surrounding them. Well, from what I understand, uh, this particular speaker, it's got five speakers built into it. So it uh, uh, can produce, uh, you know, high dy dynamic range, mid range. Uh, it's got some good bass. And you talked about the Dolby Atmos uh, technology uh, as well. So that is a pretty crazy price, 260 bucks for a, a higher end speaker. They're really uh, going after that market in a big way. Do you think uh, they could give Sonos a, a run for their money here? It'll be interesting to see. Um it might be interesting for people that are committed to uh, the Alexa uh, ecosystem and are comfortable operating in that model. Um, for example, if you have an Amazon Fire TV, you can buy two of these and use that as a surround sound system for your Amazon Kindle TV. And you just have this, you know, set up that's all Amazon, all compatible, working together. But a lot of people, they mix and match hardware, right? So you have a TV from Samsung and then you want to add an Alexa speaker into your home. Um, if you go with a product like Sonos, it gives you access to multiple smart assistants. You can talk to Alexa, you can talk to Google. You have your choice. Yeah, I guess you're stuck here with uh, Alexa on this uh, particular uh, uh, one. Uh, let's look at some of the other uh, Echo uh, speakers that came out. Uh, a new Echo Dot, and this has actually got a little clock built into it as well. Yeah, so there's the premium Echo Dot, and I guess they just wanted to push a little more information for people, make it uh, slightly more useful rather than just like a hockey puck sized thing that you have sitting on your bedside table. Now it's a clock. You can read the time, and I believe you can even see the weather on it. 
from what I understand, that's going for about seventy nine ninety nine uh, Canadian. And then they've got this uh, new Echo Flex. What's that all about? Thirty five bucks. Yeah, the Echo Flex is the cheapest uh, way to buy a speaker that uh, comes with Alexa's connection to it. And uh, it's a speaker that plugs into your wall. So uh, you plug it into an outlet and it sits right there in your wall outlet as a, a small speaker that you can talk to Alexa on. I guess this isn't going to be pumping out premium sound. It looks uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty basic. Yeah, it's probably equivalent to the Echo Dot. It's interesting, though, it actually has a USB port on the bottom, so you can actually still plug your phone into it if you cram for spades. Have they, uh, I think they also addressed uh, privacy. I know Google and Apple have really um, uh, come around to addressing some of the privacy concerns with voice assistants. Uh, what, did, what did they announce uh, on the Amazon Alexa side? Not enough from my perspective. Earlier this year, Bloomberg reported that uh, Alexa uh, recordings were being listened to by human contractors that Amazon was hiring. And these are this is not everything you're saying in your home, to be clear. It's just select recordings after you say the trigger word that human contractors were reviewing in an effort to improve the quality of the Alexa service. But they didn't disclose that before it was reported. Yeah. And then we found out that Google and Apple was doing the same thing, right? So there was a big backlash over this. Consumers were upset that they felt like they were being spied on in their own homes with these smart speakers. So the way that Apple and Google responded to that is they both promised to stop doing it. They're just not going to hire um, human contractors anymore. Or Google, in their case, they said they would give you the option to opt into that. So the default is that you've opted out, but if you want to help out Google in improving its service, you can opt into that. What Amazon said today is that there's a new way that you can delete uh, your recordings automatically. So after your recordings become either three months old or 18 months old, uh, Amazon will have a setting where it automatically deletes all of your recordings. But that doesn't really solve the problem uh, that, you know, that's a three month window where you have your recordings that are automatically saved. There's no way to opt out of those being saved and there's no way to opt out of those being listened to by human contractors. So I, I think they need to go further and match what Apple and Google have done in this regards. We're talking with Brian Jackson. Uh, he's with a uh, technology analyst firm called the Infotech. Did I get the right Infotech group? Infotech Research Group. Research Group. So uh, he's smart. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to technology. Uh, Brian, if you don't mind hanging on the line, uh, I want to do another segment uh, just talking about the other dump truck full of stuff that Amazon announced uh, uh, this week. Everything from uh, their Ring ecosystem, that's, uh, you know, the home security and, and cameras and, and lighting, to some other kind of weird stuff uh, like uh, Alexa dog tags and Samuel Jackson. As your yeah. Alexa voice? What's That's that all right. about? Can, You're going to have to stay tuned. You're listening to Get Connected here on the Chorus Radio Network. Back after this. You are back with Get Connected. Mike Agarbo here. I've got John Beeler with me today. And our good friend, Brian Jackson from the Infotech Technology Group. Did I get that right? Infotech Research Group. Research Group. Yeah, the research is the key. It's a <laughs> the key part. <laughs> uh, Brian, we're talking about Amazon. They had this big announcement uh, last week of all sorts of cool new Amazon Echo and Alexa uh, gear. We talked about the Echo speakers. Before we get to some of the weirder, interesting stuff like the uh, the Alexa dog tag uh, and Alexa glasses and Samuel Jackson talking to you, uh, Ring, that is a, a big purchase. I think uh, you know close to a billion dollars they paid for Ring. They make the Ring video doorbells. Uh, they've got uh, a whole security system now with the cameras. They've got into outdoor lighting. Uh, what else did uh, you see on this announcement this week from Ring? Yeah, so Amazon is determined to put Alexa into as many different devices as consumers will be willing to purchase. So um, these devices that we're going to talk about now are not available for everybody to buy. They're part of this sort of beta program that I think they're calling day one editions. So if you're in this uh, specific select group of um, early access customers, then you can try this and tell Amazon if it's great or not. But 
the, what, the first one of those that we can talk about here is the ring. And uh, it's literally a piece of jewelry, like uh, a thick ring that you put onto your finger. And it's got two little microphones. So you tap it. Uh, and then you can whisper to Alexa right on your finger. Yes. And uh, <laughs> it has a tiny speaker. Because that's not that weird, Brian. You put up to your ear <laughs> and you listen to Alexa, like telling you a secret, just whispering into your ear softly. You, the ring has a speaker in it? Yes, sir. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> like, why? I don't know. Why? I don't, this is, they think people want to uh, interact with Alexa on the go. This is feedback that Amazon has heard from its consumer base that they want to be able to talk to Alexa on the go. So you can do that through a smartphone app, but it might be even more convenient if Alexa is right there on your hand. You can tap to it and then you put it up to your, it's unobtrusive. It's not something you have to wear on your head all the time. It's easy access. If you thought girls wouldn't talk to you before, now <laughs> you've eradicated any chance. What if you give a that. girl this ring? Then <laughs> that's the last time you see her, <laughs> basically. Uh, they have glasses as well that they've announced. Yeah, so they're actually smart glasses frames because um, while you can get prescription lenses in them or just lenses that don't alter your vision at all, there's no visual component to this. So Amazon hasn't invented some sort of visual interface that's projected onto your glasses uh, in the way that Google Glass would, uh, for example. Instead, it's just, again, um, microphones and speakers that are mounted onto the frame. So this is another way for you to speak to Alexa without using your hands. It's a hands-free method. It responds to your voice, and it does so in a way that Amazon says only you can hear and other people around you won't really notice that Alexa is speaking to you. Okay, let's talk dog tags. Uh, so they also announced a, uh, a smart tag uh, that you can attach to your dog's collar that right. will basically let you know if the dog has left the yard. Yeah, uh, so this really is uh, one of the more far-reaching applications of Alexa that I have heard about, and it actually connects back to this whole uh, network idea that Amazon has. So first of all, Amazon wants to create a new type of network that's not Wi-Fi, it's not Bluetooth, but instead it runs on a 900 megahertz band that uh, can reach uh, from your house into their surrounding area. And uh, they've piloted this apparently in some community around Los Angeles, where they send devices to every street, every house on the street that they set up. And um, I think it can be projected, for example, from the ring cameras that they offer or uh, some of the ring smart lights that they offer. So they project this 900 megahertz network that uh, extends sort of around your neighborhood street. And um, it's aware of devices that are connected to it, right? So this dog tag is one of the devices that could connect to the network. And it would inform you if uh, your dog leaves the perimeter. So a lot of people, a lot of dog owners might have like an invisible fence product set up for their dog. So they get a notification um, if, if the dog leaves a perimeter, it would work similar to that concept. You, the dog leaves the backyard and then Alexa is notifying you on your echo in your home. Hey, spots running away. I have something like that as well. I basically go outside. If I can't find my dog, I know it's left the yard. Yeah. <laughs> There's also these devices called leashes. Yeah. <laughs> really effective at preventing your dog from running away. You never have to charge them. Uh, let's talk about ring cameras as well. Uh, Amazon's big into the, uh, security arena now with their purchase of, uh, ring. Uh, they've got a couple new cameras uh, from what I've understand, uh, a new ring stick up cam, uh, that you can plug in and an indoor cam, uh, too. Did you get a chance to check those out, Brian? No, I haven't seen the new ring cameras too much, but yeah, this is a product that, as you say, you use it at your front door and the idea is that um you know you're able to see people that are ringing your doorbell and plus when amazon delivers those packages you don't want thieves coming up and stealing the package off of your front stoop so amazon is interested in preventing that by 
using surveillance, basically. So you can try and catch the people that are, are stealing the packages off your front doorstep. Yeah, I think that's John who takes all my packages. <laughs> he seems to know when they're coming. Uh, okay, the big one for me. This was a game changer. Samuel Jackson, you can purchase him to be the voice of Alexa. I think for 99, yeah, 99 cents. I can't wait. Like, I, I got to be honest. They, uh, this, they got me with this one. They could have just announced this today and I would have been satisfied with their <laughs> product event. It's <laughs> like groundbreaking. Um, so, the key point is that this is an uncensored Samuel Jackson. Oh, see. That's right. Oh, it doesn't get better than that. No. No. So no. Are, are we going to see a whole flood of celebrity voices now? And will this go across all the different things that Alexa says? Brian, do you know? Uh, so to start with, my understanding is that you've got Samuel L. Jackson. There's no other celebrity voices available yet, but they are planning to release more in the future. So it'll be interesting to see who they offer next. Um, so there's a promotional period where you can buy Samuel L. Jackson's voice for 99 cents. And after the promotional period, I think it costs $5. Okay. So uh, make sure to jump on that uh, <laughs> right away. They and, can take uh, my, they can take know, my money now. Yeah. <laughs> what's interesting is um, Alexa can now also detect when you're frustrated with it, apparently. So I wonder if you're getting frustrated with Samuel L. Jackson, how he would respond to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's interesting. I read a little bit about it. I still got to dig down deeper, but uh, they're doing all this uh, neural net voice training so that um, apparently it gets all the characteristics of his voice. And even though he might not have spoken every single word that he's saying, uh, the computer can actually generate what he would sound like, which would exactly. be interesting. It's like uh, Amazon is making a deep fake of these celebrity voices, except they're doing it with the celebrity's consent. And we understand that it's not the celebrity actually saying it. Do you remember when uh, Tom Tom tried this with their GPS systems? You could actually purchase different yeah. celebrity voices. Yeah, you could get the Darth Vader voice directing you where to go. There was the uh, boy band voice. A lot of great fun. <laughs> We're talking with Brian Jackson from the Infotech Research Group, uh, their leading technology analyst uh, firm. I want to thank you for joining us, Brian. Thanks for having me, Mike. We come back from the break. More tech to talk here and get connected. Stay tuned. You're back with Get Connected. Mike and John here. You know, there's actually a few things that uh, we forgot to talk about as far as uh, Amazon. There's just so much in that dump truck. <laughs> oh, my God. Um the Echo Glow. Echo Glow. What is what does this thing do so again? So this is basically a little lamp. It looks like a little snow globe almost. Yeah. But it's it's clear or frosted white, and it has an L RGB LED inside of it. And the idea behind this is it's it's about thirty US, so I guess 40, 45 Canadian. Yeah. Um, the idea is you can actually do uh, a light show with this, or you can also have a flickering campfire effect. A sleep timer that will gradually dim at bedtime as you're reading the stories. And then there's a dance party mode that will kick off the music and lights. Again, controlled all by Alexa. Does that interest you? It's targeted more at kids. Yeah. But this might be kind of fun, especially if you have like a game night or something like that or sleepover. <laughs> uh, one that I think might be bigger, Echo Buds. So yes. they've announced kind of like an AirPod competitor. Maybe not so much an AirPod competitor, but like a wireless earbud. Yeah, I think it's more like the the Samsung Galaxy uh, gear buds, right? So, yeah. Um, and so their uh, their noise uh, reduction, not noise cancellation. They're using uh, Bose algorithms to reduce noise. So not a full cancellation of noise around, but no, because there's still it. little things that plug into your ear. Not yeah, a full exactly. Can. Uh, but the pricing here, uh, and I guess the the advantage is not only will they work with Alexa. But they'll also work with Google Assistant if you've got an Android phone, and they'll work with Siri uh, as well. Yeah. And these things are going to be, from what I can see, under 200 bucks, 129 US. Yeah, so still a fairly premium earbud in that space. Yeah, but if you look at AirPods, like they're over a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. So yeah. this, you know, when it hits Canada, it, it will be under 200. Yeah. If I'm doing my conversion correctly. Yes. Which is yeah. constantly changing. Yeah, I... I I'm not sure. I mean, it looks like we've seen this type of thing before, and apparently they're very similar to the Jabras. Yeah. Um, so 
they'll be good for, you know, base response and that type of thing. Um, but do we need another one? I mean, I guess the fact that Alexa's built into it. Oh, thank God. Kind of negates the need for things like the smart frames <laughs> yeah. and the ring yeah. thing that they have, right? So, uh, Another interesting thing uh, that uh, popped up this week, uh, I saw a, a new story on uh, Vizio TVs. Maybe not as big up here in Canada, but they, they were pretty big in the U.S. They're still uh, around, uh, spelled V-I-Z-I-O. Uh, they did well because they, you know, good good features for cheap essentially. Well, now apparently Amazon is saying that they're not going to be uh, supporting Amazon Prime Video in Vizio smart TVs anymore, which is why. interesting. Because you think they'd want to have that available on every platform possible. Yeah, for sure. I Did Vizio do something to piss them off? I don't know. I, I have a Vizio TV. It's a few years old now. It's a 3D TV. Oh, <laughs> yes. super so, useful. So you know it's good. Uh, and it had Netflix and Amazon Prime Video built in. But the the interface was super clunky clunky it almost felt like there was like they were using like an atari yeah to, you know as far as the processor uh was concerned so press a button I, and wait yeah, oh yeah like even using netflix on it right now it's uh crazy because it just takes so long to load everything so i think it's probably just a matter of the processing power uh in the tv not being able to handle uh, Prime Video. And you know they want it to work on everything. So right. it must be pretty crappy right. <laughs> if it's not going to work anymore. <laughs> but, it, you know, it just goes to show you, you know, if you are in the market for a new TV, having a smart TV, yes. I mean, all I think most TVs have smart features built into them. I, I wouldn't make that the, the deciding factor in purchasing your TV because as we're seeing with this Vizio announcement, uh, Amazon not supporting Prime Video on it anymore, you know, eventually the technology is going to not I, be supported. I think most people have realized that their set-top box is probably more important, yes. whether it be an Apple TV, you know, an Amazon Fire TV stick or something like that, because those things change much more frequently than people change out their TVs. And they're more powerful, right? So yeah. you're going to be able to get the best features of Netflix or whatever yeah. you're going to be. When I got my 4K TV, I specifically got one that wasn't smart. All it had was Chromecast built in at the time. Okay. Now I probably would, the next one I'll get will probably have Amazon built in or, or something comparable. Um, but that is probably as smart as I want my TV to be because I have lots of things I plug into it. It's interesting because there's so many of these Roku TVs out now. Yes. Uh, TCL, Hisense, Sharp. Uh, there's a number of companies that actually just have the Roku smart system built into it. And I can't believe it, but it is still working on all these older Roku TVs too. Yeah. Like they haven't had any issues with any of the updates. They just Netflix and Amazon Prime and all the Roku channels still work. Must just be how they've... they've done all their back end stuff and just made it really optimized. Yeah. The one thing I don't like about the Roku uh, platform is I have a lot of my own content, uh, you know, movies and TV shows that I have on my own home server. And it, it, it just doesn't have an app that will play a lot of that. No VLC I or no, or, I don't uh, think the platform is powerful enough to maybe to handle that. Yeah. So I think they just kind of went after like the streaming channels and made sure that they're, their hardware was strong enough for it. I love Roku. Like that's yeah. what I would buy my parents because it's just bulletproof. Right. Like it just, you can't mess it up. Right. It's so easy to Which work. Which has always been their promise. Yes. Like, yeah. cause Apple TV, I love Apple TV. I've got a couple of them in my home and it's nice cause you can download all sorts of apps and it's super powerful and it ties in with all my cloud photos. Apple photos, Arcade now? Apple Arcade. Uh, but God help me if I gave that to my parents. Like they, I think they would just, be confused all the yeah. time with a little trackpad and yes and everything yeah and the, the remote is quite fragile too i'm concerned about dropping it off the couch onto the hardwood floor and it's shattering the glass touchpad <laughs> yeah there's that too okay we're gonna have to take another break when we come back it's the skill of the week for your amazon echo device you're listening to get connected here on the course radio network back after this you are back with get connected it's that time it's our skill of the week if you've got an amazon alexa uh, device and God, they're in everything now, apparently. So you probably do. Uh, John, you've got her skill of the week. Yeah, actually, this is not a skill. This is uh, a, a feature that they've rolled out fairly recently okay. that I think you might want to check out, especially if you have little ones or you want to be quiet with your Alexa device. Um, it's called whisper mode. 
And you can basically say something to Alexa in a whisper and she will respond back to you in a whisper. So you can actually have a quiet conversation with Alexa if there's someone sleeping in the room or, you know, children nearby or whatever. Well, you know what? That's that's kind of cool because uh, I have, I've got a couple Amazon Alexas in my bedroom. I don't know why. I've got uh, the Echo Show 5. <laughs> yeah. It's like my clock radio now. Mine too, The yeah. best ever. Totally agree. Uh, in my light switch, I've got the Ecobee light right. switch that has Amazon Alexa built into it as well. Uh, so sometimes at night, uh, you know, if my wife is sleeping, I'm still breathing and I want to turn something off, you know, I'm like, Alexa, but I have to be loud. Right. And then Alexa's loud. You couldn't just pick up your phone? Like, well, yeah, or I could get up <laughs> and turn the light off, you know, <laughs> like a sucker. <laughs> How lazy has this stuff made me? Like, I can't, I don't even have to get out of bed or off the couch anymore to do everything. Right. So, but, but now you can do it quieter. I can do it quietly yeah. and not annoy the hell out of my wife who yes. hates Alexa yeah. now, with all her this, might. This may work out of the box, so to speak, but you can go into the app and there is a little slider in the uh, settings, Alexa account, Alexa voice responses, and then toggle whispered responses on or off. So if you turn it on, then any whispered uh, requests will be responded to in whisper response. Very cool. Don't forget to hit uh, our website, getconnectedmedia.com. We've got uh, all our video reviews, uh, first looks, and uh, all our podcasts as well. And speaking of podcasts, check out the Get Connected and the App Show podcast available on the Apple iTunes Store and uh, Spotify and wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Mike and John signing off. We'll see you again next week.